بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سيدنا موسى عليه السلام was with the children of Israel in the wilderness they got lost in the desert and Musa wanted good for them nevertheless they were causing him difficulties and they were being stubborn and difficult to deal with so Musa alayhi salam told his people oh my people why do you harm me when you know that i am a messenger sent by allah to you they started becoming unruly and they started doing as they please so Musa alayhi salatu wassalam made a dua to allah ya allah i would like some laws some regulations something that we can govern these people with something that they can follow in order that they may succeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed musa alayhi salam to fast for 30 days in seclusion allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to meet musa and he gave an appointment with musa to meet him after 30 days he said after 30 days we meet in the holy place next to atur next to the mountain where allah had met him first where allah spoke him spoke to him in the first place and i will give you some instructions so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is what you shall do and appoint your brother Harun to take care of the masses whilst you are away. And Musa alayhi salam, he promised Bani Israel that he'll be back after 30 days. And he assigned Harun alayhi salam, his brother, to be responsible for the affairs of Bani Israel at that time. He says, oh Harun, I'm going to go for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's instruction to fulfill it. And I want you to take care of these people in my absence. And I want you to do good. I want you to be upright. And I want you never to follow the path of the mischief makers. Musa alayhi salam was in a hurry to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he went early. The Mufassirin said that what happened was that Musa alayhi salam was commanded to fast for 30 days. Because fasting is purification. So Musa alayhi salam will go through a period of purification for 30 days before he meets with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During those 30 days, Musa alayhi salam was fasting every day. And because of his fasting, the breath of Musa alayhi salam started to change. Musa alayhi salam used to miswak to change that smell. And he went to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah told him, Oh Musa, don't you know that I love the smell of the mouth of the person who is fasting? more than I love the smell of musk. Go and fast for another 10 days. So the total was 40 days and he completed the term appointed by his Lord of 40 nights. Then Musa salam went to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, And when Musa came at the time and place appointed by us and his Lord spoke to him. Musa went to speak with Allah. So Musa is Kalimullah the one whom Allah spoke with. And Kalim means Allah spoke with him many times. Musa salam now reached to the level where Allah is speaking with him. Musa salam wanted to get one step higher. He wanted to see Allah. So he said, Ya Allah, I'd like to ask you something. I believe completely, but I want to see you, Ya Allah. I've heard you. I'm speaking to you, but I want to see you, Ya Allah. Musa alayhi salam. Did Musa say this because he is in doubt? No, he said it because he wants to achieve that high status and to enjoy the pleasure of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the greatest pleasure. Allah says, you will never see me. No, not here, not with these eyes, not in this world, no. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa, look at the mountain and I am gonna reveal myself to the mountain. Allah wants to show him a proof that he cannot see Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to show himself to the mountain. And Musa is staring at the mountain. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed himself to the mountain. And Ibn Abbas says, Allah only revealed part of himself. The mountain was destroyed and crushed down and turned into dust. The mountain could not stand the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the mountain was crushed and destroyed and vanished completely just went down in the earth because of humbleness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and broke into pieces of dirt, sand. The mountain, that massive, great, big, gigantic mountain crushed and demolished in seconds. A miracle, my brothers and sisters. Something that you can't even imagine. When Musa alayhi salam saw that scene, that Nahi human being probably saw that scene before 
Musa fainted. He went unconscious. What kind of a scene is that? This was the reaction of Musa when he saw the mountain. What would have happened to him if he had seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When he regained his consciousness, he said, Glory be to you. Glory be to you. I seek forgiveness for having asked what I just asked. I am the first from the submitters. He says, I am the first from the believers. Because he was a Muslim, he had already submitted. And he believed as well. But now he believes even more firm. Did anybody see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dunya? No one. No one has seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his eyes. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. But not with his eyes. He saw him with his heart. When you are dreaming, your eyes are closed. But you can still see and hear. So some of the scholars say that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been able to see Allah in dunya with his heart. But not with his eyes. In Akhira, can anybody see Allah? Who are the ones who see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Al-Mu'minun, the believers in Jannah. The ones who are in the lower levels of Jannah, they would see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every Juma. In the time of Salatul Juma, the people of Jannah will go to a certain meeting place and their seats will be reserved ahead of time. And on what basis are they reserved? How close you are to the Khatib on Juma? That's in the Hadith. The seats. The closer you are to the Imam in Salatul Jumu'ah, the closer you are going to be to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on those meetings on Jumu'ah. And then the people of Firdaus, the higher levels, they would see Allah Subhanahu wa Taala twice a day. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that Allah Azza wa Jal will address the people in the paradise, and Allah Almighty will ask them, "O oh my servants, is there anything else that you want in the paradise?" So they say, "Ya Allah, is there anything that you didn't give us?" Is everything here? Whatever we wish for, you give us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appear to them and they'll forget what's behind them. Just seeing Allah Azza wa Jal, seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest pleasure in the paradise, my brothers and sisters in Islam. So Musa alayhi salatu wa salam says, Wa ana awwalul mu'mineen, I am the first to believe. So Allah tells him, O oh Musa, I have chosen you over and above all these people. For two things. The first is that I have spoken to you and I am granting you prophethood. I'm making you a messenger. I have given you a message. I have chosen you for in order to give you this wahi. Now, what was the difference between him and Harun? Harun alayhi salatu was salam was a Nabi. Musa alayhi salam was a Rasul. Musa was given the book. Harun was helping him to convey that book. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give Musa alayhi salam the Torah will reveal the Torah to Musa alayhi salam on written bricks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals his commandments which is the Torah to Musa to be sent to Bani Israel. These 10 commandments that we hear about, they had come to Musa alayhi salam at that time. They are written in the Quran. So the people who are around you here, we have favored you above all of them. So take this book, take what we are giving you and be from amongst those who are thankful. And Musa alayhi salam was very, very thankful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him a question. Oh Musa, we gave you an appointed time and a place. You've come to the place slightly before the time. Why are you in a haste? He says, Ya Allah, I wanted to come to you. I wanted to come to talk to you. And I really wanted to come to get this book and revelation. He was excited. MashaAllah. May Allah make us regular with our salah. Salah is far more important. You come five minutes before, ten minutes before. This is what it is. Why? We love to communicate with Allah. Look at Musa alayhi salam. Ya Allah, I love to communicate with you. I came before time. So Allah says that the people that you have left behind, there is a man known as Samiri who has already begun to lead them astray. So anyway, when Musa alayhi salam got his alwah, his tablets, and it was already written. He picked them up from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he went away. Musa told his people that I am going to absent for how long? 30 days. Because the appointment in the beginning was 30. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa add another 10 days. When Israel did not know that the appointment was changed. After 30 days, Bani Israel are waiting for Musa to come back. 30 days went past. Where is Musa? Ya Harun, where is Musa? Allahu Alam, I was supposed to come in 30 days. 31 days went past. 
few days went past after 30. Where is Musa? Musa promised us that he's coming back. It looks like Musa passed away. It looks like Musa is lost. And all the rumors started to take place. And Bani Israel could not relax and be stabled. And Harun السلام, was the soft tough person. Relax Bani Israel. Musa will come back. Relax Bani Israel. Musa will come back. One of the sick and diseased people from the Bani Israel by the name of Samiri. What did a Samiri do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the ability to see something nobody else saw. It's an unusual supernatural ability that a Samiri had. It's a fitna. It's a trial from Allah. What did he see? When Jibreel alayhi salam was throwing the dust and the mud in the mouth of Fir'aun and when Jibreel used to come to Musa alayhi salam Samiri by one reason or another he saw Jibreel on his horse and he realized that every time the horse of Jibreel will step on a land that land will plant a tree or plant a grass So as Samiri went and he picked up some of that dirt from under the footsteps of the horse of Jibreel and he kept that dirt with him. Then as Samiri told Bani Israel to gather all of the gold that they have brought with them from the Egypt. The women of children of Israel somehow had the gold that belonged to the Egyptian woman. They were feeling guilty because of that gold. As Samiri suggested that they gather all of this gold together and they burn it. And what did as Samiri do? He threw that dirt that he had with him in the gold. So it was mixed with the gold. And then they made out of it a calf. Somehow that calf would make a sound, which is the sound of a cow, as if it was alive. And this was a fitna for Bani Israel when they saw this calf made out of gold making this sound. And then Samiri started to call out and say, This is the Lord that Musa is looking for and that's why Musa is late. As Samiri told them, this is your God. So they started to worshipping it. And they were making sujood and ibadah to the calf. They were worshipping it. Harun saw that scene and was so amazed. Oh Ben Israel, what's wrong with you? You replace Allah with this golden calf? You replace Allah Azza wa Jal with something that you make with your own hands? And Harun got so upset and angry and worried. Musa alayhi salam is late for a few days. The miracles and the great miracles that took place. And now you replace Allah with a calf made out of gold. Oh my people, you are being trialed in this. And verily your Lord is Allah, the most gracious. So follow me and obey my order. They said, we will not stop worshipping the calf until Musa comes back. Do whatever you want. We are not going to stop worshipping the calf. Majority of Bani Israel prostrated and submitted to that golden calf except a small number. The scholars say they do not exceed 70. Out of 600,000 ikhwani, only 70 did not worship that calf. No Musa alayhi salam coming back from 40 spiritual days with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He heard from Allah, he spoke to Allah. Allah addressed him every single day. He did not see anyone from Bani Israel to be shocked and surprised that within 40 days, the people of Bani Israel replaced their Lord Allah with a golden calf made with their own hands prostrating to it. Musa a.s. was told by Allah that your people have worshipped the calf. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Musa went back to his people angry and upset and sorry. He was so sad. How could this happen in my absence? My people commit shirk. And they worship another god besides Allah. So angry and upset. So he went there to meet his people. Allah has given to Musa the alwah, the tablets that had the huda of Allah in them. When Musa salam saw Bani Israel making sujood to the calf, he threw the tablet from his hand. Musa salam, when he saw this in front of his eyes, he was in a state of shock. So those tablets fell from his hand. He already knew about it because Allah told him. How come his reaction was different 
when he saw it because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says when you hear something it's not like seeing it when you see something it's a completely different thing than when you hear about it allah's orders are written on it put them on the side and he came to harun so angry from harun and grabbed the beard of harun and shook harun and he said oh the son of my mother i leave you for 40 days i leave bani israel muslims and believers i come back and see them idol worshipers he put the blame on harun how could you let them so harun responded back and he said relax you are the son of my mother i would not accept such a thing like that they were going to kill me when i responded back at them they were going to come and slaughter me i stopped them and tried to stop them and i preached to them and i told them stop 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 and they refused to listen to me at the end they threatened to kill me so i left him what can i do more and musa alayhi salam got angry on bani israel and he grabbed that golden calf and he destroyed it and demolished it and after he destroyed and demolished it, he threw it in the sea and he said can see what your lord can do now when bani israel saw that if the and lord can even protect itself how is it going to protect them and he said oh my people allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you with victory allah has promised you with the holy land allah has promised you with jannah Allah has promised you with tamkin establishment on the earth if you are believers how could you leave all of these promises and commit shirk do you feel that it's too long in coming so you gave up or did you desire that wrath should descend from your lord on you that you broke your promise to me they said we did not break the promise of our own will but we were made to carry the weight of the ornaments of the people of your own then we cast them into the fire and that was what as samiri suggested they had guilt for carrying that gold with them but they did not feel any guilt committing shirk against allah subhanahu wa taala taqwa in very small things but no taqwa in the major issues when harun told them not to worship the calf they threatened harun they said we gonna kill you he said they saw me weak and they were almost going to kill me so don't let the enemy rejoice over us Harun was saying don't let the enemies because we have some enemies among these people some of them are enemies don't let them rejoice because of the dispute between me and you so whenever we have a conflict we should keep it private Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Musa a very strong and powerful personality because he is going to be dealing with a very stubborn people Bani Israel so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him a very strong personality and a strong body and a strong character and a strong presence when musa was there they wouldn't dare to do this thing that they did in front of harun allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given harun the qualifications he needs as a wazir an advisor for his brother he has given him the ability to speak when musa alayhi salam was absent bani israel were about to kill him so harun had to calm things down until his brother would come back if he tried to enforce the law and prevent them from worshiping the calf that would have caused a rift and a dispute between bani israel and the problem could get out of control he has to tell the people that this is wrong and he tell them that this is wrong your lord is allah ar rahman but he waited until his brother came back and then he would leave it in the hands of his brother musa musa alayhi salam accepted that apology and he accepted the justification of sayyidina haru so musa alayhi salam said oh allah forgive me and my brother and include us both in your mercy because you are the most merciful musa had a very soft and a merciful heart even though he was in a moment of anger he was very angry and he was grabbing his brother by his beard and by his head he was very angry but immediately when he saw that his brother was on the right side he started making dua for him and his brother and then musa alayhi salam turned towards as samiri the cause of all this problem he said and what is the matter with you o samiri so samiri answered in a silly manner i saw something that no one else saw 
So I got one handful of the dust from that horse. So my own mind and my own soul, my desire told me that this is what I should do. I must put it into the fire together with all this and I should make something and that would be a God because the source of part of it was of that particular horse that the angel came on. So Musa alayhi salam declared a punishment for him. He said, go for you from now on for the rest of your life. You will only be able to utter one word and that is la misas, which means don't touch me. So Allah inflicted him with a severe disease where anyone who came near him, he could only say, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me throughout the rest of his life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and you have an appointed time and place that will never ever miss you. And you should know Allah will get hold of you for having encouraged and engaged in this. And still when I'm asking you, you're proud to tell me what you did. No repentance, no nothing. So Allah says, Musa alayhi salam told him, We're gonna leave you now alone. This is the punishment in dunya. And then in akhirah, there is another punishment that will be on you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Musa alayhi salam looks at all the people and says, Your Rabb is the one, Allah, no one worthy of worship besides your maker. You never worship anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has the knowledge of absolutely everything. So they all start to feel guilty and remorse and they came to Musa apologizing and they wanted to repent but the repentance was very very tough Allah Azza wa Jal sent his anger and wrath on the people of Israel because such an action their repentance Allah Azza wa Jal said whoever wants to repent to Allah must go and kill himself if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept your repentance then go and slaughter yourself so many of them did and a lot more didn't. It is said in one day 70,000 were killed. It was a massacre. Blood was flowing. This was their tawbah because of the big sin they have committed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Kareem that he accepted the repentance of those who did repent to Allah Azza wa Jal. They were so tough and rough people. So Allah Azza wa Jal became tough on them. And then Musa alayhi salam will get Bani Israel together to give them what Allah had ordered him to pass to them. And that's the Torah. During that 40 days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Musa alayhi salam the Torah. And they were written on tablets. They were written on brick boards. He told them, O oh Bani Israel, I came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a messenger from Allah Azza wa Jal with his commandments. And here are the tablets, here are the boards that Allah Azza wa Jal had ordained his orders in. Take it and follow what's in it. What was the response of Bani Israel? Bani Israel said, no, show us what is in the first. And then we're going to tell you, are we going to follow it or not? And they know that it is the word of Allah. They told Musa, we are not going to follow it until you let us know what is written there. Whatever we like, we will take. Whatever we don't like, we're going to reject. This is something that we want to decide on. Allahu Akbar! Musa alayhi salam was amazed. What's wrong with you people? Is this your response to your Lord, the one that saved you? Take what Allah Azza wa Jal had ordered you. He's Allah's orders. He's Allah's commandments. Take it! And they said, no, we're not going to take. We will look into it. Whatever we like, we'll take. Whatever we don't like, we'll reject. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa alayhi salam, tell them to take it by by force. Allah is not telling you now to take it by option. Allah is telling you to take it by force, whether you like it or not. And remember what's in it. Act upon it. Practice it. So Musa said, take what Allah had ordered you by force. So they said, no, we're not going to take it. We will look into it. We'll discuss it between us. We'll see whatever we like, we'll take. And whatever we don't like, we'll reject. Subhanallah. This is the response to the messenger of Allah, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And after that, another great miracle. Another amazing thing took place. The creator of the heavens and the earth. And the creator of the mountains, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lifted up a mountain in the air and this mountain flew over Bani Israel and it stopped right there like a cloud over their heads. Could you imagine that? A massive mountain above your head in the air and then the mountain spoke from above their heads saying take what Allah had ordered you by force and remember what's in it. Act upon what's in it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Bani Israel, you either follow the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, otherwise you will be crushed under this mountain. Al-Mufassirin say that Bani Israel, as soon as they saw the mountain above their heads, they said, we're going to follow, we agree, and they made sujood. Ibn Abbas says, they didn't make sujood on their foreheads and their nose. They made sujood on their cheeks, so that they can look with one eye up to the mountain. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving Bani Israel many chances. Musa salam chose 70 men from the elders of Bani Israel, the most prominent among them, the leaders of the people. Musa salam had chosen the best of the 600,000 and there were 70. There were 70 who did not worship the calf. And he took them to the mountain Atul to meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the Mufassirin say they went on that mission to apologize to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what Bani Israel have done. When they got there, Musa alayhi salam, he said, stand here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to address me. And Allah azza wa jal is going to give you the honor today that you will hear Allah azza wa jal addressing me. Could you imagine my brothers? Could you imagine my sisters? You are in that place with Musa alayhi salam in a gathering that you could hear Allah Azza wa Jal addressing one of his prophets and messengers. While there are 70 are standing, Musa is there at the front, a cloud will come and cover on all of them that they can't see each other. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address Musa alayhi salam. Those 70 are listening and listening to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Musa alayhi salam. And then, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended what he was speaking to Musa or addressing Musa alayhi salam, the cloud went away and they were there just looking at Musa. My brothers and sisters, these are the best of people from Bani Israel. After what I've experienced and after what I've heard, they said, oh Musa, this is not enough. This is not enough. Oh Musa, we are not going to believe in Allah until we see him with our own eyes. You come to apologize for the sin and now you putting these prerequisites. We want to see him. It's not enough that we hear him. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was very, very angry again. So what did he do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a lightning and a thunder together with a jolt, a tremor. Anger and wrath came down on the 70 that Allah Azza wa Jal took their lives away. 70 of them collapsed on the ground. They were all dead. Musa is in a dilemma. Musa took these 70, which are the best of Bani Israel, to go and to apologize to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is he going to tell Bani Israel? Allah took their lives away. They all ran away and said, sure, if we're going to follow Musa, we're all going to be dead. So Musa alayhi salam. Ya Rabb, I came with 70, and these are the best of 70. I came with them alive, I'm going to go back dead with them. Oh, what bad Israel think of me, Ya Rabb al-Alameen? So he said, Ya Rabb, ya, ya Allah, if you want to destroy them and me, from before or now, this is up to you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, you destroy us. Because of the wrongdoing people from among us, this is your test. You will guide whoever you want, Ya Allah, and you will misguide whoever you want. Ya Allah, Ya our close Lord that we worship. And Musa alayhi salam sought forgiveness for them. Ya Allah, I seek forgiveness, Ya Allah. These people, Ya Allah, forgive them and so on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, we gave them life after they were dead. Once again, we brought them up, back from the dead, back to the living, so that they can be thankful. These people were dead. They know they were dead. They know they were dead. And Allah Azza wa Jal brought them back after their death. 
And my brothers and sisters, the way Allah brought them back to death was also a miracle. A miracle for them to see and experience. The way Allah brought them back to life from death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought them back alive, not at once. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way He brought them back alive, He brought one alive after the other. So the one that comes alive, He sees the dead one come back alive. So they could see it with their own eyes. And they could go back and say, we were dead. And Allah brought us back alive. And I saw this dead person on the ground and Allah brought him back alive. But this, my brothers and sisters, did not increase their iman. But they were the worst of people. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, After that, we instructed them from the commandments that on the Sabbath, they were not allowed to work at all. Inshallah, we will continue with the story of Musa alayhi salam by the will of Allah. Until then, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.